How can we build stronger bridges in our communities, particularly between groups of different backgrounds? Or perhaps you're one who's giving and giving and giving, yet progress seems so slow or at times non-existent. And we wonder, is there a point in which it's okay to give up? Or can love truly conquer all? Well, I asked very similar questions when I met Leroy and D'Artagnan. And over the years, as the three of us have grown closer, we've learned some interesting answers. Answers related to the judgments we make about people, the labels we assign to them, and how potential is truly unleashed. And as I walked into their gym for the first time, there they were, coming at me, one on top of the other. I can make conversation with professional athletes with relative ease, but knowing what to say to these two shook my nerves a bit. Before I could figure it out, their coach noticed my camera crew and intercepted me. I extended my hand to introduce myself. He playfully slapped it away. He looked me in the eye and he said, you have been sent here by God. So no pressure there, huh? <laughs> he went on to explain that every day he walked the track praying for his athletes. And he said, this year I've been praying hard for Sutton and Crockett because they're seniors, and once they graduate, this world's got nothing for them. He said, and then ESPN walks into my gym. He said, that ain't no coincidence, little lady. You are here for a reason. Well, when their first story aired in 2009, America agreed. From Ipswich to Idaho, men and women, young and old, saw what D'Artagnan saw, the potential for greatness. The supporters rallied around, the funds rolled in, and college was now a reality. And I really thought I would just sort of pack them up and wave proudly from afar as they rode off into their new lives. But it quickly became apparent that the landmines between their dreams and their realities were more than they could handle on their own. We affectionately came to call these things ghetto grenades. Kapuya. <laughs> They were things like when Leroy needed a bank check for his college housing deposit, but he didn't know a soul with a bank account. Or D'Artagnan, despite graduating high school with a 3.0 and passing all his standardized tests, emerged with a fifth grade math level, an eighth grade reading level, and began failing everything. Neither one of them knew how to hit a deadline, keep an appointment, organize a day, or hold on to two nickels. It was like they had all of the heart and soul of survivors of champions even, but the life skills of children. They are who you become when you grow up without a support system. They are who you become when you grow up without opportunities. Because what I was seeing in their communities was that being poor and being homeless had less to do with running out of money and everything to do with running out of relationships. You couldn't break out of those cycles with determination alone. It was going to take a hand, and not a hand out, but a hand up to a level playing field. I also started to see that handing them opportunities was only half of the solution and only half of what they needed. The other half, the really crucial half, was love. They needed constant support if they were going to soar, a love that would be with them through the two steps forward and every step back. And so when things grew difficult or they would drop the ball, I resolved to love harder and fiercer I celebrated the slightest victory, the smallest grade improvement, an appointment kept, a month without overdrafting the bank account. And with every victory, I poured on the praise because I knew that though being a Sutton or being a Crockett may look like a curse to an outsider, it's not. It was simply a pattern, and a committed love could break that cycle.